Welcome to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast, where we discuss various dog training topics to help you become the best leader for your dog. Marvin Pierce has over 20 years of experience with obedience training for dogs located in the Sherwood, Oregon area. Offering private lessons and group clinics, the dog teacher has been able to change the lives of dog owners by helping them develop and maintain an obedient dog. For more information, contact us at MarvinPierceDogTeacher.com. Uh, Mariah, what are we talking about? Joey Dovey's here, and she says, hi, friends. Hi, Joey. Hey, Joey. I feel rude when I'm looking at the phone, but I'm sharing this <laughs> to, well, to Marvin's page. I don't know. <clears throat> Setting expectations for your own dog? Especially, I mean, I know I'm on the puppy train, but it's, like, so hard when... I wish I could teach everyone before they get the puppy yeah. to think about what they want mm -hmm. when the dog is a year old and then start to apply some of that while it's a puppy. Yeah. Like jumping on you, uh, mouthing. mouthing is like an absolute no. Um, Playing a game when you're trying to catch them. Yeah, chasing them. Yeah, funny. it's like so cute when a puppy does it. Yeah, but it's terrible. Yeah, they look at you and they have your sock in their mouth and they run and you're like, that's kind of funny, but it's terrible because the dog will run from you. Yeah, and when one you day they're to gonna outrun to you. you. Yeah, and you can't yep. get them anymore. Yep. And that's one thing I want to talk about. Almost every puppy you get at eight weeks old will come to you. Yes, just naturally. Yeah. But you shouldn't trust that no. or rely on it. And there's a lot of people who, like, live in town and will go to the park and let their puppy off leash or at their apartment or, or in their front yard because their puppies never ran away from them. But your puppy will run away from you one day. And I, I feel like every puppy, they get this look in their eye, and you're like, today's the day. And you're like... They're not coming to me right now. And then yeah. we kind of know what to do where we don't let them run away and chase them. We do different things to try and get them to come to us. But at home, most people will go try to chase and catch the puppy. And then you start the game of yeah. chasing them. And we have people who chase three-year-old dogs. We have people who show up late for their lessons because they're like, I couldn't catch my dog. Yeah. <laughs> or they have to reschedule their lesson because they couldn't catch their dog. <laughs> Bianca, you have like 20 new people on TikTok. You want to introduce what Marvin Pierce is, where you're from? And what you're about. We are Bianca and Mariah with Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher. Marvin Pierce has currently stepped out, <laughs> <laughs> which is not unusual. Normally he makes it through Facebook yeah. Live, but yeah, he's always doing like five things at once. We uh, train dogs, yep. teach dogs, general obedience. Yeah, yeah, and we're balanced trainers. Mm -hmm. We um, really believe in doing what's fair to the dog and letting dogs be dogs, having fun with your dog. Um, and we have all sorts of videos on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. Some of them are just of us talking smack. Some of them are actual quality training videos. Some of them are just good humor. If you're on TikTok, you should go watch the Storm and Enzo Puppy Pals video because yeah. it's the cutest thing ever. It's a little pit bull and a golden retriever that were besties while they were here with us. Um, we're on Facebook Live, TikTok Live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Just talking about dogs. So if you have questions, can TikTok people ask questions while we're on live? Yeah. So ask us a question about dog training. And if it's something we can give direction to online, we will give you some tips. If we feel it's something that we have to know your dog and know more about you and the experience, then we won't give you advice that could like put you or your dog in danger. But we like to give some advice online. So ask us some questions about your dog. Tell us what kind of dog you have, how old they are, um, if they're really well behaved or if they have a bunch of problems. We were just talking about how everyone, not everyone, but most people who come to us really tell us everything that's good about their dog before they get into yeah. the nitty gritty, what's wrong with their dog. And we like to know what's wrong with your dog because that's our job is to help you with it. We can't help if we don't know what's wrong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you come here and you tell us everything's right with your dog, we're like useless. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need us. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. No questions on, on Facebook either. Um, 
that refresh is really big. Just keep it. Uh, didn't Mary answer if she drinks espressos? Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> Bronk probably drinks espressos. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Puppuccinos. Uh-huh. Oh, here we go. Matthew. Hold on a sec. It's refreshing. I just lost it. Give me a sec here. Matthew Fischler says, Our mini Aussie comes in the house, in the backyard, etc. But the second he gets out the front door, he takes off down the block, and it's impossible to get him back. We plan to bring him to you for some training soon to fine tune him. He's generally well behaved, but that's one thing we really need help with. And it's so much more than just having to catch your dog after he goes through the front door. Yeah. Your dog shouldn't ever leave the front door without your permission. That's a huge uh, safety mm-hmm. problem. I mean, he could get hit by a car. He could get eaten by a neighbor dog. Who knows what dog's running down the street that could eat him, especially if he's a Minnie because he'll probably run up to any yeah. dog and think that he's tough. And people they think they weigh 100 pounds. Yeah, or he'll get picked up and stolen if he doesn't bite people. Yeah. But that's uh, many <laughs> that's just so dangerous and and it's easy for us. I used to throw things at Marvin when he would say yeah. it's easy. But it's easy for us to teach you how to teach a dog not to race out the front door. <clears throat> hey, do y'all trash talking me? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> but we really look forward to seeing your dog Matthew mm-hmm. and helping you. So <clears throat> bring it on over and we'll help you out. What is it? Miniature Aussie. Nice. <laughs> mine are so cool. Said no one. No. Oh, we, cool. we about flunked when you left. We're like, our leader's gone. What are we talking about? <laughs> I figured you'd just talk about me. It'd be easy. That's what we should have talked got, about. No, why didn't we think of that? Very <laughs> cool says entire family drinks espresso. See, she gets it. Yep. Really? <laughs> if you're on here, we'd like to know if you drink espressos or bean water out of a cure <laughs> uh, And then Matthew heard your comment and then he said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, like, Jody don't drink coffee at all. Mochas or any of that shit. She drinks what? wine no, and beer. None? Like, not none. even in the morning. I literally... Diet Pepsi. Literally diet Pepsi. can't she even... She drove un- to town I, this morning I, to get her yeah. a diet In the Pepsi. morning. I do not yeah. understand. No. I couldn't... I... I used to drink Pepsi 24-7. I mean, in the middle of the night, I'd have one by my bed. I'd get them together. I know coffee's not good for you, but that's not good for you. She either. said she was up at 4.30 in the morning. Jody. Without but coffee? It's very unusual. <laughs> it's not like normal <laughs> shit around here. But without coffee. Yeah. yeah. She probably had a diet Pepsi. That's probably why she didn't have them at 7.30 or 8 this morning. Yeah. Because she drank it at 4.30, so she had to go down and get some. Are we going to talk about training dogs or drinking mochas? Oh, well, I just am curious what the dog training public says about if they drink co- good coffee or bean water out of cure. <laughs> <laughs> my coffee, you know, is I think Irene orders my coffee, and I think she got me two different ones because uh, one of them is just weird. So I've been, like, throwing it out half the time. So, this kid's go back down her driveway, so... Uh, yeah, I have a lot of confidence in her driving. Yeah, so, do I. <laughs> so, Brett, we got any questions? No we need questions. some questions. Here, hand me that paper. I'll go over that real quick. Do we, we have anybody here? We want people to ask yes. us questions. Yes. Yeah, that's the whole thing is ask yeah. questions. Is uh, Larry King on here from down in Texas? If Matthew's still on here, I want to ask if when he puts his dog on a leash and he opens the front door, if his dog runs out the front door. Because <laughs> my guess is yes. Yeah. Newburgh Old Fashion Festival Dog Costume Contest. So on Friday, July 29th of 2022 at the Ren, Rennie, Rennie Field Tennis <laughs> Courts. <laughs> Ask uh, me how it's We're having a contest. We're not having. We're going to be at the contest at 7 p.m. Pre-registration has rules are judge. available uh, at the NOF website. I don't know what that is. Knopf and Newburgh Animal Shelter. Newburgh Old Fashioned Festival dot org. I'm guessing Knopf is Newburgh, <laughs> Newburgh Old Fashioned Festival. Fashion yeah, Festival. probably. <laughs> There's a limit of 30 contestants, so pre-register. It's a costume contest for dog. Yeah. And they're judging most creative, most hilarious, best human and dog look alike. That's going to be funny. Best in show. Susan and we Susan, Susan and, and Jason. Jason. Yeah, and we're going to be around there doing Chris something. Chris and Lana. So. Yeah. 
Okay. Do you remember when Jason and Suzanne dressed <coughs> up as mm-hmm. Suzanne dressed up as yeah. Marvin and Jason dressed up as me? Yeah, that was pretty. That funny. was pretty funny. So let's talk about uh, dogs loading in vehicles. I mean, that's so. I've seen. I think sometimes people dogs don't load in a vehicle because they taught them not to by puppies helping them get their front feet in there and they pick them up and put them in and tell them how good they are. And it escalates. I've helped five, six, seven, eight-year-old dogs learn to load in a vehicle. People's helped them all their life. I'm like, holy crap. And people don't realize it's only because the dog thinks they're not supposed to jump in. Or they don't know that they can. Yeah. yeah. Well, but a lot of these dogs will jump up on this table. Yeah, that's true. Or there the was counter. one dog that jumps eight foot fences but won't load into yeah. the back of a jeep. For sure. That's funny. Yeah, but it's because they put their front feet in and we pick them up and help them. Mm-hmm. And so they just can't do it. How's your mocha, Brent? It's great. How about yours? Great. Looks yeah. like you're enjoying it. You got a response from Matthew. He says, he's not darting out the front door. It's more about when we're working in the yard. He seems to be having a good day, listening well. We take him out of the front yard, want him to just hang out and stick around while we work in the front yard, and then he darts off. Wait, so he's off leash in the front yard? He walks good on a leash for the most part. He doesn't pull, etc. So we reviewed our question answering protocol today and it's if I ask Marvin if his dog comes to him when he calls it and he says yes except or sometimes or most of the time that means no so if your dog recalls most of the time and is having a good day Mariah and I actually just mentioned this we think people who have puppies that come to them shouldn't be off leash because it's not like really set into the puppy yet. You know how much you just complicated us? Oh, reward shit. it. I got a headache. <laughs> uh, also, I think you asked if. I don't the even dog, know what you said. I think you asked if the dog Brad, is. Brad, do you know what I said? <laughs> if you asked yeah. if the dog is in the front yard. Most of the time, right? In the front yard. Yes, he said yes. It shouldn't be. It's not safe. They don't have a hundred percent recall on the dog. It shouldn't be off leash in the front yard. Unless near a street. Like a hundred percent fenced in. Yeah. Yeah. Even any dogs, you know. Not I'm, just a puppy. Well yeah. but I mean like me with Bear and Maury and Rossi, I wouldn't let them off leash in the front yard if I was in town. No. I mean they're cool, they come to me, but they're still like go look for mischief sometimes. And I wouldn't let them. But Well they he's out there with him. Well, but even if I was Mari Roxy and Bear and I lived in Newburgh on Main Street or... Yeah, they wouldn't be wandering around. They would be, like, laying down next to you. Yeah, but I wouldn't let them out there off leash yeah. just because I wouldn't be concentrating on them, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I was just sitting out in my front yard in a shade tree or something, drinking whiskey or somebody or something, which I don't drink, but I might have mocha or something. <laughs> but I might have my dog laying there with me, you know? Right. But yeah. I wouldn't have all three of them right. out there. Well, but, yeah, you can't really predict if a squirrel's going to run by and yeah, the dog that day is going to chase it. makes them run out yeah. the street. I mean, yeah. man, that's devastating. But I think that, <clears throat> and I don't, you know, sometimes that's how people spend quality time with their dogs, too, because they don't live in the country or they don't get to go run around with their dog. But you could go get a 30-foot paracord yeah. and at yeah. least have an end to that off-leash. For sure. But I think that's what more people should do rather than... Just for safety. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I sold cow dogs for years, and I'd have a guy call me, and he'd be like, man, my dog got killed yesterday. I said, what happened? He's like, man, I've been hauling back in my truck for five years, and he jumped out. I ran over him. I it's said, I bet he'll in. never do that again. Yeah. And he's like, well, you know, and I said, well, dude, why are you hauling him not securing him? Yeah. Yeah. Put him in a crate, a yeah. kennel, tie him in the back of your truck, yeah. do something. Yeah. I mean, don't be hauling your dog down the road. And everybody's like, oh, my dog would never jump out. I'm like, not but one. We talk about that with the windows down. Yeah. People have the window down enough that the dog could yeah. jump out of the car, and that's so dangerous. It well, is. Carrie's I mean, had happen to her. Yeah, we had yeah. one dog that the customer was driving up our driveway, and the dog was so excited to get here because it had been here before that it bailed out the window. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not ever safe not cool. to haul. Like yeah. That. Matthew well, said... 
right? That's why Marvin's gonna whip this little psychopath and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Many Aussies are mini psychopaths. <laughs> I really like them though. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got Christine Gonzalez says we were there with Gracie earlier this week and I forgot the name of the probiotic for the grass eating issue. Bernie's perfect poop. Bernie's like the Bernie's Bernie's. Bernie's. Like the name. Yeah. Like the neighbor dog. Yeah. Bernie. B R N I E. B R N I E. Right? Yeah. Bernie's. Bernie's. It's bad when I can help spell. Bernie's work was more time. Bernie's what? Perfect poop. Perfect poop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that we should talk about. I never make no bones about it. If you have a dog that tries to bite your children, I just bottom line don't feel you should have the dog. Mm -hmm. And people get pissy at me. They're like, well, what am I supposed to do? And it's like, I don't know, dude. Mm -hmm. But you have a kid. You're responsible for your child. If you or your wife gets bit, it's your own damn fault. But your yeah. kid gets bit, it's still your fault, and it shouldn't happen, you know. And <clears throat> the other day, we have people here with a big pit bull thing that were trying to bite their kid. And I thought we had a great conversation until they left, and then yeah, I so think they I. felt that I slapped them and made them like it, and they didn't right. like it once they figured it out. So we... Uh, we was talking to him and I told him, I said, if we get your dog trained to where we Thanks, feel it's good, what kid do you use to test him? And they named a kid. Yeah. And it was theirs. Yeah. And then Bianca's like, I don't think you understood it. question. So she reworded it. And so the guy picked a different kid. I'm like, okay. holy crap, dude. You're going to sacrifice your child for your dog that you guys going to buy him. That just don't make sense to me. So... It's just really hard for people to understand the, I don't know, the damage that it could do to a little kid to get dog bit. You better announce what you're eating. And who made it? It's ooey gooey butter cake and Bailey made it. Your granddaughter. Give a fresh slice. <laughs> fresh slice so we can show the screen. Oh, I thought <laughs> you wanted another one. <laughs> She's bringing the whole cake. Right here. <laughs> Oops. Is it go. in there? A little higher. Really good. the people of the internet. Nice. Do we have so, any questions? Do we Valerie, have any? Valerie just said everyone else got dessert but me. Yeah. Uh -huh. You should have be been here. Yeah. Okay, should have been Wednesday here. Wednesday night. You could have she said chicken. she was going to come pick up Potch and Callie tonight. Okay, watch. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, you got any question? Nope. Do we have any people? Yeah. yeah. About 10 people here on Facebook. So. Okay. We were talking today about inter a lot about introducing dog to dogs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's such a double-edged sword always. Because a lot of times the person that has the dog don't have confidence in their dog. So it makes it a lot harder. But me forever, if I have aggressive type dogs, majority of the time, if I can get the dog that's aggressive or under control, I have one of y'all bring in Mari or Roxy or normally, and we walk them. And then we'll end up walking them in the same direction, side by side, with the dogs on the off sides of us, so they're not together. Right. Until we can get them settled down, and then we'll move one dog on the, in between us, you know, and then we'll eventually move the other dog between us. But there's so many people walking down the street, Joe Bob and John Bob, and they want to be running up with their two pet bulls, and, oh, let my dog meet your dog. Mm -hmm. And they're both lunging on leashes, pulling at one another, and then you end up with a bad dog fight. In my world, it ain't the dog's fault. It's the human. The human's one to put them in that situation. Mm -hmm. And I told somebody today, why do you want to introduce your dog to a dog on the street that you may never see again? The dogs are not going to exchange phone numbers and shit and call one another and be like, hey, let's speak at the park. No. You know? And, I, and to me, I tell people, like we told Suzanne, you know, highly recommended it when you moved to California. Find somebody with good dogs, you know, go scout and whatever you got to do and let your dogs play with cool dogs. But don't walk down the street and 
Let Joe Bob bring his badass dog up and meet your dog. Well, What's so bad is good. most of the time you don't know the people. You don't. And so you're just wholeheartedly trusting their opinion that their dog is really friendly. And everyone's opinion is a little different. Yeah. The thing that gets me here, and it's happened several times over the years, Somebody will be here for a meet and greet, dog lesson, whatever. And we'll talk about their dogs, talk about their dogs, and I'll be like, can I have any dogs? Sure, and they'll hand me the leash, and they're like, you don't like men. Mm -hmm. I'm like, thanks. Yeah. He's handing me this little puppy dog that's like 80 pounds of muscle, and he don't like men. And I'm not sure why they do it, but they do. And so it's just kind of... Me, if your dog don't like men, you might ought to tell a man that your dog don't like men before you hand a man the yeah. leash. Instead of waiting until afterwards and then tell him. Got some questions. Are you ready for them? Mm -hmm. Do it. All right. Donna Davis says, hi all. Evan's mom here. This is a really good question we should do a video on. Uh, Evan's mom here. We hear so much about dogs enjoying being in the dog pack. Do only dogs need a sibling? No. Mm-mm. They just need to do what you do, where you bring her up once in a while to play. Yeah. I always feel that this dog myth that's going around that dogs need to be in a pack all the time. It's not true. Like today, Kim was talking about how excited Coco was to go home. And he's like, man, she's just excited to get here in the morning. Mm -hmm. And she only plays with dogs once in a while when King comes up and works or hangs out here, you know. Mm -hmm. so now it's been a little bit more, but yeah. there for a while, it might be once every three weeks. Mm -hmm. And so these dogs don't always need to be in a pack of dogs, but I feel they sh it's really good for them to be in a pack of good dogs once in a while, just to keep that in their mind that they are a dog, mm -hmm. and they can be good and they can have fun, but then they can go home and exercise on a treadmill or go for a run or a walk or play ball in the backyard or frisbee, you know? And be a dog. <clears throat> yeah, and I don't think all these dogs need near as much. And I told somebody the other day and they about balled on me. I'm like, you know, you need to pet your dog more than your dog needs petting. Mm -hmm. I said, you addict your dog to being petted and stared at. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to screw a dog up that bad, but people do it every day. And we see it, you know? And nobody does it intentionally. I mean, no. it just happens. But I feel it happens so much, and it's just, it's because sometimes people get a dog, a puppy, and they just need to pet it. Mm -hmm. They should run down to Walmart and get one off the shelf and pet that son buck. And then whenever you get your shit together, go get you a puppy or a dog. <laughs> but that's my opinion. Donna says, also espresso. <laughs> uh, Marietta Finley says, hey, missed a dog walk lately. Hi, Marietta. Uh, Valerie Jester says, could you all chat about what to do if you see signs of food aggression or toy resource garden, usually in puppies and haven't seen them before? Watch Bianca when she tries to get a piece of my pie. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. <laughs> <clears throat> Actually, go back and watch the video of when I tried to drink out of your water. Yeah. <laughs> she might got beat with a growl. <clears throat> you know, we uh, Dallas's owners was here the other day for a lesson. That Rottweiler is pretty ornery, I think, got here. But it was really food aggressive, bone aggressive. I mean, if you had a bone, it was like, it was pretty bad. And it had been here like seven, eight days or whatever, and they was here doing a lesson. And they reminded me on the playground, I'm like, oh, man, we ain't even worked on that yet, but let's do it real quick. And so we did it in between the barns out there in that little Sally Port area. And I went in the kennels and got, like, I think maybe four different type of dog bones. We went out there. First one I dropped, that dog started to get it, and I, ah, and he just backed up, and I threw all four of them down on the ground. The dog didn't even try to get them. But I claimed them. I own them. Don't get in my space and try to take my bones. And that's what happens with food so much, you know. And the double-edged sword always is like Callie and Roxy. I think one of them will eat your fingers with a treat. Roxy. But it's because we don't feed her flipping treats, yeah. you know. Callie takes a treat really nicely. Callie does? <laughs> yeah. Oddly enough. And somebody did it, not me, probably Mariah. Probably. Her baby for a day or two. But 
it's all a matter of training him. But like the guy, the guy David came course on. He said he could put his hand in his dog food bowl with the dog food and move it all around, take dog food, make the dog leave it alone, but he said, you can't do it with a steak. <laughs> yeah. So, his dog has rules. You can have the dog food, but don't take the steak. And I don't think a dog should own anything, but I think of these little puppies is where you want to start. Right. right. You know? I was just going to touch and on that. You started with everything. Yeah. Sock, a shoe, a bone, yeah. a treat, food. Some things food. on the internet will say, don't mess with your puppy's food. Let them eat. And that's <laughs> terrible. But on top of that, people take home a puppy and they give it a treat for everything it does. Pottying, sitting down, sniffing something, coming up to you. It gets a treat for everything. So now they've been given sugar every day. And then when someone else tries to take their sugar away and they've been used to having it every day, all the time, 24 seven, there's a whole nother problem. It's not just that the puppy's resource guarding things, it's that that puppy expects to get things from the people all the time. I feel that a lot of that comes back to the guy, the dog that I talked to today or yesterday, the guy, I guess, he told me that if his dog got his flip-flop, he was gone and the race was on and the game was on. Why? In my world, it's simple. If I tell my dog to come to me, he's got to come to me when I'm playing a game. It don't matter if he just ate my Rolex watch. I don't care. If I tell him to come, he's got to come. Yeah. Bam. But with puppies, they can't do that. Depends on how old they are, you know, and how much training you've done with them and what kind of situations you put them in. I mean, we've got uh, Rebel and Chick. Chick. And I told that guy today in another two or three weeks, my puppy will be coming to me when I call him. I don't give a shit what we're doing. Near what? three months old or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless something really weird happens, I call that pup, he'll come to me. And he won't worry about it. He'll just come to me because right. he's supposed yeah. to come to me because I asked him to come to me. The language is pretty simple. Chick, come. That's in the summer. Then they got and it will me. be fun how you arrive there. It will yeah, be. For you and the puppy. And anybody who watches, you know, we should do a video of it, but yeah. <clears throat> People throw rocks at me and stuff, right? Because okay. I treat my pup like a puppy instead of a mm -hmm. baby. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> I think one of the hard things is, one of the good things is for people who are on Facebook, if you follow these two pups, like you hopefully have Dixie in them, I don't know how many Vic videos you put of Dixie stringing up. Uh, Not enough. <laughs> huh? Not enough. <laughs> really? Yeah, no. I'm going to skip to the next subject. I can it up. <laughs> now, if you put, if we put videos up of our pups, I think people would be amazed. We could just take a five minute video of what Dixie does. Like last night, I walked by Jody in the yard, and Dixie really wanted to go say hi to Jody because she likes people. But I asked her, Tilly and Scout, to lay down, and Dixie just laid down like she was a two year old dog. And was just supposed to lay there and be good. And she's what, five months old? Mm -hmm. Six months. Yeah. Six months. Six and she's months. a doodle too. And she's still doing. <laughs> Careful, Valerie. <Okay. laughs> <laughs> but and Nira, your little dog, Nira. Nira. Yes. Nira. Keep on the call. When you say Nira, 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 come. How old is Nira? Shoot. As old as your puppies, the cow dogs. Yeah. So three, four months somewhere oh. there. Yeah. <laughs> you say Nira, come, and she goes. Yep. She's on it. <laughs> but did she come to you? Yep. She does. Oh. She just, her first thing she does is pops up like yep. a ground squirrel. She looks, and looks for where she's going. going. And then you say, good girl? And she's like, okay, I'm coming. Yep. <laughs> on 90 miles an hour. And today I seen she went in her crate when you asked her. Yep. She does that really nicely. You know, and yep. so does Dixie. Yeah. And Mo uh, yep. Moxie. Yeah. Moxie. Yep. Moxie. Yep. Moxie's and kind of on a rebellion week this yes. week. <laughs> yeah, and they do. But they yeah. do, yeah. yeah they yeah. do. And, that's and we thing. like that because it's an opportunity to train more. Well, <clears throat> it's an opportunity to learn how far to push it. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, and that's the bad thing with puppies and dogs any age, I think. And I've really noticed it. You know, for the first week, they're kind of turd. And then 
The second week they do really good, and then usually about 13, 14 days, they just try to rebel on you and be yeah. like, I don't got to listen no more. Yeah. But then the 15, 16 days, they're like, I'm ready to learn. Yeah. And so people just, for me, we got to kind of notice that time and not push that dog. Mm -hmm. I mean, I want to take them up to the level where I think they can handle it and then back off. Right. But I don't want to push them past that level because that's what gets us in trouble. Well, know? like Mariah and I with Pip were talking about how it was an accomplishment that she would stay on the barrel for 30 seconds. And then today she stayed on for like four minutes mm -hmm. until you came in. Yeah. He. He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hard for but people. other dogs could stay on a lot longer. It's just where they're at and what's wrong. Yeah. But Pip came here so scared she hid behind the owner. Under our legs too. Yeah. When we take her out, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's just terrible. Now he's finally he's coming around. He's changed a lot. Yeah. But you, I don't think that you know. And Eliana, it's fun for Eliana that she notices in Mariah, you know, and. They're like, well, we can't take him with too many dogs because he gets too uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. But then today, Eliana's like, hey, what dogs can we add to my pack? The Eliana, she takes care of the kennels for us, and she takes care of making sure the dogs all get in and out and stuff. And uh, We help her when she needs it, which we help a lot, just because we all jump in and try to help her so she don't have to do it all. But she picks her packs that she goes wants to take out that can get along and not right. be in trouble. And that's so important for Pip because she gets a chance, he gets a chance to build up his own confidence. And Keita was the same way when yeah. we met her. Yeah, yeah she has that a lot of That dog would hide from a that. fly. I mean, yeah. it was terrible. Now she don't care except she don't like boots. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> boots ain't very nice dogs. <laughs> so, Brett, you got anything? Yeah, Valerie just came on. Valerie Lodge, one with Itty. Valerie. said, hey, Hey there, is Itty a good student? I'm looking forward to Itty Bitty? Yeah. <laughs> looking forward for my class this weekend. That pup is fun now. Yeah, yeah she, is. she is. She ain't peed on nobody, I don't think, for days. Nope. And she's nope. come out of her shell. She's just she a spunky has. little puppy. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. starting to play with pups and run yeah. around and bark a little bit. Yeah, she comes when I call her. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Same. I'm super excited for her. And yeah. You know, that's another pup that I think. The fun thing for me is the pup's mommy mm -hmm. is wanting to get help. Yes. And yeah. she's doing it. I mean, yeah. and the thing is, is I think that's going to be a great dog. Yeah. And I think it'll be a great dog that she can sit around and love on and pet on. Mm -hmm. And it it just has to have rules and boundaries, yeah. and it's got to understand those rules yeah. and boundaries. And that's what people don't do. Like today, if you come home and you just broke your fingernail or something, <laughs> and you got to sit there and pet on your dog and cry for two hours, you know? Or if the frickin' mocha got turned it's over. It's the dog car. that breaks our fingernails. Yeah, <laughs> if you turn your mocha over on the way home and you don't want to drive two hours back to town and get another one, and you just want to go cry on your dog, they can only take so many of those days of crying. I know. And then they start being bad. Yep. So some days you got to go home and be chipper and happy. And You know, I told somebody today, <clears throat> they said something about not working right now. I'm like, dude, I don't either. But I said, I'd hate that to go get a job. Because I don't well, know what we do is fun. I mean, there's none of us that just work what we have to and go home. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mariah works overtime all the time, and she don't just have to. No. As nice as she does a lot of times, because she gets stuff done. That's something not not something you have to do. Mm -hmm. And you're the same way. And me, I don't even keep my hours. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even want my hours. Uh, but it is. It's, it's fun for everybody. You probably don't want to pay the bill on your yeah, hours. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I made money until I got my bill. <laughs> but it is fun to see how dedicated everybody is to what we do. And, and the people, you know, the lady the other day out here to talk about how dedicated we are to what we do. And... For me, there's nothing more relaxing and more fun than seeing somebody being able to play with. And it don't matter if it's a doodle or a rottweiler. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if the pup or the dog's doing really good with the people and the people are having a lot of fun with it and the pup or dog's being behaved, that's rewarding for us, you know, because mm -hmm. I don't even know how many thousands of dogs maybe I've worked with in my lifetime, but there's not one of them that it is fun and exciting when I see it leave the kennels and it's being good and the people are yeah. taking death with it. And, you know, one of our huge things is, is when people leave here, we're not done with them, you know. No. We're still we really don't want to be, yeah. No, if you're having a problem with your dog, let us know. If your dog's yeah. being good, let us know, you know. Meet us at the pack walks in town or out here at the property yeah. or we'll go to the beach or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> but we don't ever want someone to feel like, yep, you three weeks though, we're done, you know. Yeah. It's not that way. I mean, we got people that, like Kay, she came here three or four years ago and ain't left. She always been, you, you work here, you, same way. 
You actually came here looking for a job, though. Yeah. I think you're the only one that didn't come here with a problem yeah. dog. The problem dog followed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she got it out. She came here. Brett, you got anything? Nothing. So I don't know what time of the day it is. Oh, it's only 27. So what are we going to talk about? Hey, let's talk about our barrel games. Have you told everybody to show up? No. I haven't. <laughs> so, well, uh, Bianca, tell us about our barrel games coming up. Saturday at 3 p.m. This coming Saturday? Yes, yes. correct. Make yeah. sure you're in right weekend. Uh, we're doing the barrel games, which have you, if you have not heard what the barrel games are, we do a fundraiser. We pick something local to give that money to. Right now it's going to someone with a vet bill that was large, and we're helping them pay that off. So it's $25 for an entry fee. Uh, or whatever you want to donate. Yeah, yeah. or whatever you want to donate. And a $25 minimum entry fee. And we put dogs on barrels, and we have all sorts of fun with them. We ride around on a bicycle, and if they get off, you lose a point. If you call your dog by the wrong name and they get off, you lose a round. And then if you... Uh, if you're me and you have to put your hands in your pocket and ask your dog to come without whistling or patting your leg, you lose. Uh, if your uh, dog gets off the barrel when we throw a ball, when you squeak a squeaky, squeaky toy, toy, all sorts of stuff. Mm -hmm. We add up the points at the end of the round, and I won last time. Um, and <laughs> Wait, last time? The puppies won. Josh won last time. Jocelyn Not in the trainer's around. round. Okay. <laughs> this is fun. I'm just listening. <laughs> Bianca, I, I beat win. Marvin. Yeah. That's all I <laughs> care about. <laughs> but it was like my fault totally. Yeah, he, he picked his own round that made yeah. his dog lose. Yeah, yeah I But I still beat Marvin. I want Bianca so. to feel good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> so, and the thing is for the, uh, the barrel games, if your dog's here, you don't have to be here. We have people who give us the money, and yeah, one of us dog's here for will training. enter your dog for you. Yeah, and uh, we still donate money, so it's just a fun time. As long as we've had them out with dogs, yeah. yeah. So I don't think we have any that we yeah. haven't. And it's just a fun time for us, and uh, and it's fun for the dogs. Believe it or not, they have a lot of fun because they're really. Some people get real serious and try to win and stuff like me. Yeah, I think uh, Josh and Carrie and Jake will not miss a barrel games yeah. event. No. Yeah, they have fun with it. <laughs> and Goofy, I was surprised he missed the last one since he does. I know. Yeah, we better one. see Goofy. We want Goofy here yeah. at this yeah. one. He's a good one. He's a lot and Willie. And you know we got Willie. a uh, no we've kidding. got a few dogs. That, oh no, Brett, the driveway's uh -oh. blocked and there's UPS. Okay. I don't know why he parked in the driveway. <laughs> Every time I do it, I ask if I should move my car. Well, I don't know why you asked. This is like, hey, maybe I shouldn't block driveway. <laughs> Good job, Brett. I don't really care. It's not me. Yeah. Hey, he seen him get up, so he's like, oh, yeah, I'm, on <laughs> I'm not going to throw the package out the bottom of the driveway this time. Yeah. <clears throat> no, but it is a lot of fun for, the, for to do the barrel games, and it's fun to see people that really uh, are super stoked about their dogs being good. And getting to see other dogs like mine, it's like everybody's day when my dog makes a mistake. UPS. Oh. It's everybody's day whenever my dog makes a mistake, they all fly up. We shit. love it. Yeah. 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 And when Bianca's dog makes a mistake, it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. I love that yeah. too. And Mariah's dog didn't even not make a mistake. Tilly he made such like a. I made such a big mistake. Did he get with two Tilly. points? I think so. That was about it, though. <laughs> yeah, that was a rough day for Concho. He was fresh out of surgery. Seriously, though, Concho will do really good when there's no audience. Yeah. When there's an audience, he is the class clown. So is Nira. Yep. <laughs> yeah, she just followed suit. So, uh, what do we want to talk about now? We don't have nobody here to tell us we have any questions. So, if you got questions, keep <laughs> just keep the, asking them. Yeah, and back then our computer point. person will come back. So, uh, what about somebody just walking up and wanting to pet your dogs on the street? No. Why not? There's just no reason for it. What do you say? I did not get a dog for other people to pet it. That's rude. And I don't <laughs> want my dog to expect every single person to pet him. Yeah, I don't want the habit of when I'm walking that they think every person they see is going to come pet him. Yeah. You know how much I've changed over the years? Back... 15, 18 years ago, we rode all, me and Joey rode all the time. We camped up in the mountains, rode in the mountains and shit. Every time we was riding, we'd see some little kids. They're like, oh, can we bet the horse? I'm like, sure, I'll jump off and we'd throw kids on my horses and they take pictures and pictures and pictures. And Jody's like, 
can we go? I'm like, there's five more kids here now. <laughs> so, nowadays, it's like, don't touch my dog. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And if I got, like, if I've got Mari or Roxy or Bear and I'm in town walking and there's some little kids want to pet a yeah. dog, I'll let them. Yeah, yeah. You know? But Callie, yeah, I don't know. Because she's so yeah. unpredictable yeah. about just being a turd. And she would never bite one. She would just yeah. lick them or something. And, or <clears throat> push them over just to watch them fall. But I think it is, is you know, it's the same thing we were talking earlier about letting your dog meet Joe Bob's dog. There's not a lot of reason for it. Mm -hmm. If I have somebody's dog that, even here locally, you know, if somebody has a dog, they just need to meet a dog, get a hold of us. We'll try to help you figure mm -hmm. it out, you know. And we've been trying, and we haven't quite accomplished it yet because we've been a little busy, but figure out how to get different people like in Beaverton together. Mm -hmm. Or in Lake Oswego or in Portland or Midville or wherever, you know. I really like when two people who are friends or family both have a dog, but they aren't able to have those dogs together, and we help both people, and then they can get those yeah. dogs together. It's like Jack now. He goes out on Saturday with Boston and yeah. Willow after yeah. the walks over. They yeah. go back out and let the dog run and play together, you know. Yeah. And it's pretty fun because Boston is a kind of turd sometimes, you know. Yeah. And so it's fun to see people get to let their dogs play together. It is. And it's just hard for people to uh, to be able to do that with people yeah. they don't know. I mean, yeah. the dogs they don't know because I mean, it's just always so dangerous. So. Yeah. So, Brett, we've been not running without you, man. <laughs> you what? Have not been running without you? Been running without you, I guess. Oh, go. Cool. I guess we're still Any alive. new questions? You know, me. No comments? Uh, some of the, oh, Sue. Said someone at the dog park gave Marley treats. I asked what she was chewing, and the guy said, "Oh no, I should have asked." No he just gave your dog shit. a treat without permission. I'd be Why slapping someone. Marley at the dog park. Someone gave Marley a treat without asking. People do it all the time. Yeah. I mean, it's just like. What if the dog has allergies? Yeah. Right, like Scout. Not their dog. Yeah, Scout get diarrhea right away. I don't even crap but in a the dog floor. like blue. That could be the end of the dog. Yeah. And it is so dangerous to give dogs stuff without asking. Because people just, I don't know, they just feed dogs because they want to feed dogs. And yeah. I think some people don't even have dogs. They just got treats and they just find it out. Probably, yeah. So. She said, yep, so P.O.'d. <laughs> yeah, I bet she was oh, mad. Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? Sue with Marley. Uh, chocolate Lab. The little chocolate lab. The one that went to the beach with us. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. She said, yeah, she can't have treats. She has tummy issues. Yeah, yeah. That dog wasn't here today for the game day. What? Oh, for... Oh, the walk. walk. Yeah. Hmm. Well, they should definitely come for the... Barrel. Yeah, you should come yeah. to the barrel games on Saturday. Heavy Practice pump. your barrel <laughs> at home yeah. with the bed. You know, I gave You that. can bring your own barrel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gave I that to. lady a barrel with... Uh, The little doodle that was here today. Cinder? Oh, yeah. I gave her a barrel one day. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> she really needed a barrel, she said, so I gave her one. What I really is, like that dog. Yeah. yeah. What time is broken, Doug? 3 p.m. on Saturday. Yes. Man, that's like going to be 98 degrees. Not really. It's going to be 90 on Monday, but Saturday won't be bad. We'll do so, it in the office. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Turn the air conditioner up. Yeah, Brett, you got anything else? Uh, one new comment just came in. Let's see, Valley says, I will be there. Cool. Did we <laughs> awesome. got anybody from Texas on here, Brett? Anybody say where they're from? Uh, not yet, no. Sue Smith <laughs> said, we have to wait till August. I have to teach fours at church on Saturday at... I don't know. Make Dan come. Yeah. Yeah. Make Dan come. <laughs> Leah says, I was hoping... To Hoping the new cow dogs would be the special guests. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mine would probably win it all and everybody would be mad. No, I think she meant for Facebook yeah, Live. Yeah. They wouldn't like fall asleep in our lap like wow. Dixie no, did for Facebook alive. Live. Yeah, Mariah's hair would be chewed yeah. off. Right. This would all be knocked yeah. over. Other than that, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Soon they got tired. Dishes would be like yeah. clean. Yeah. So, Brett, we got anything? Nope. All right. You don't got anything you want to add? Nope. I don't think so. Uh, Sue just said thank you. You're welcome. 
All right, we're going to bail off here and y'all can go let dogs out. And no. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap or something. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Marvin Pierce Dog Teacher Podcast. If you found this information helpful, we suggest following even more of our dog training tips and resources on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Just search Marvin P.